Greetings. Welcome to Paranormal M, your portal to the mysterious and unexplained. Subscribe and enable notifications and embark on a journey through the realms of the supernatural with us. We promise to keep you on the edge of your seat. I know for a fact I saw a ghost slash demon. However, when I was around seven or eight, me and my mother lived in a homeless shelter. There was an office and a locked door before entering the building to prevent intruders slash abuse of significant others from entering. It was a woman's shelter. When you enter the room with the locked door, you can see into the office itself and see the community cameras on the monitor. I routinely was a nosy fucking kid, so of course I was always looking at the cameras. One night I looked at the monitors and I saw a woman standing in the way of the kitchen camera. It was blocking everything else out. I don't remember much of what she looked like, but I do remember it felt terrifying to look at her. Like she could see me. I remember distinctly that she had no eyes and her hair was pulled back, but not much else. I told my mom because I was scared, of course, and she told me that she saw nothing. Only in the kitchen. Maybe it was the trick of the light or where I was standing that made it look like that. I accepted that and pretended that there was nothing there. However, just before the door to the shelter let us in, that specific camera went fuzzy. I mean, full-on static. Then I saw nothing, just the kitchen. No woman and no way somebody could be that close to the camera considering it was high up enough to be showing the entire room. Needless to say, it freaked my mom out enough that she worried for me. I know what most of you were thinking. It could have been somebody hacking the camera. Someone could have been working on it. And all would be true if anyone else had seen her too. It was unmistakable. There were seven cameras and no one noticed a woman. Everybody else saw a kitchen. As I've grown up, I've had multiple ghost encounters. However, this is the only one I felt malice in. Like they wanted to scare me at the very least. Other times that should have been more terrifying simply don't live up to the dread of feeling watched by someone only you can see. Furthermore, being watched by someone with no eyes. The scariest part of all, though, is that I have proof. If, well, for no one else I know specifically, it was real, and so does my mother. And I always wonder why me, you know? I was a kid with nothing special. Why want to scare me, but none of the other kids? My apartment is haunted. Almost two years ago, my fiancé and I moved into our first apartment. That's honestly the perfect spot for us. Close to work and family, off a quiet street, and our neighbors have luckily never been an issue. Some things I think are important are as follows. We are on the end of the building on the first floor. We still need to walk up a small set of stairs, so we're not actually on ground level. There is one tenant above us, and one next door. The apartment diagonal to us has been empty since we've moved in. The entire structure of the building is cement and brick, so it's incredibly rare that we ever hear our neighbors. The only time we hear our upstairs neighbors is when they turn their shower on, and sometimes we can hear them playing music, but even that is rare. We never hear them walking, talking, or just moving around in general. I think it's also worth mentioning that we are far from the street, so we never hear cars going by. Now, it seems like we catch something odd happening about every two months. Other things have happened, but we don't catch everything. My fiancé and I at the time, with this first incident, basically working opposite shifts. I work a typical 8-to-5 desk job and he worked a 24-hour EMS shift every few days, so I was alone some nights. My first night alone, I invited my friend to stay over. She slept on the sofa in the living room area. May of 2018. 
In the morning, she told me that she got startled in the middle of the night by a noise. When she woke up, she was sweating. She felt like there was something heavy on her chest. She explained the noise was some kind of deep growling sound. I hate to say I kind of brushed this off at first. We ate a lot of junk food and drank some wine before going to bed. She seemed pretty adamant that something weird happened though and still refuses to sleep over to this day. We decided to get a security camera. This is where my video starts. July 2018. We have a small bookshelf facing the front door. On the left hand side there's an open space to walk into the kitchen, and on the right hand side is the living and dining room. There's hardly any real airflow in this space. On this bookshelf we had maybe five or six congrats on your first apartment cards. One morning when my significant other went to leave for work, we saw one of these cards on the ground. So we checked the camera. If you turn the volume all the way up, you can clearly hear the card get smacked and then hit the shelf it was standing on before smacking itself flat on the ground. I can't even tell you the amount of times we tried to recreate it and couldn't. This happened at exactly 2.45 a.m. July 2018 The next night after the card falling, the night light in our living room goes out at 4.45 a.m. This could be coincidental. September 2018, 5 a.m. You can hear something fall, bang around, and then slide. You cannot see anything happen in the video, with the exception of our rat... our rat boys moving around a little. The only hard surfaces we have are everything you can see in the shot in the bathroom. My significant other and I heard this one, and we investigated. Nothing was on the floor anywhere, and the noise 100% came from our apartment. Like I said, all our walls and ceilings is cement. We know what our neighbors sound like. This was not them. November 2018, 1.23 p.m. My gym bag flips over under the ground. I know this could be things shifting normally. However, no one had touched this bag in about a week. I walked in from being outside exactly one minute later. When we saged the apartment, everything seemed to quiet down a little bit, and since then we haven't captured anything moving around. But we still hear odd noises, and things will just act strange. Unfortunately, we've forgotten to save it on the camera, so I have no proof. I'm a little bit skeptic, so I tend to write things off pretty easily. But it seems like we're haunted by something that just loves to startle us. For example, setting off the fire alarm after we're in bed. This happened three separate times. Turning on the Xbox. I read this can happen, but it's only happened once after my friend asked if anything else had happened recently. Hearing knocking inside the apartment. Hearing something fall but finding nothing on the ground. Light bulbs in the stairwell burning out incredibly fast. Then, in September 2019, my friend and I were out for a walk. When we came back in, I realized a notepad on the fridge had fallen off. Check the cameras, and you can see a pillow on my sofa fall over. Less than a minute later, the list falls off the fridge. If one or the other happened, I would have just thought it was a little weird. But both happening just seems like too big of a coincidence. Agreed. Ghost Dog When you think of a ghost dog, some may think lost innocent spirit, and others may think demonic. In my case, I'm not really sure how I feel about what I saw. It all began in 2017. I had a friend over and we'd been playing Minecraft on the PlayStation 3. We played for hours on end, having the time of our lives. Everything was going well. Until my grandpa. My grandpa cake storming out of his room, demanding that we go to sleep. My friend, being completely terrified of my grandpa, went to sleep immediately. On the other hand, I decided to see if I could still stay up all night. Note. 
We were sleeping on her L-shaped couch together. She was on one side and I was on the other. Hours passed, I was still lying awake with no phone, only a crappy dinosaur watch from Checkers. It's a shop. I couldn't tell the time even though I was 11 and everyone else in my class could, oh, could sort of figure it was about 3 because the hands were on the 3. I stopped staring at the roof and looked over to the mini lounge next to the couch that had two pink velvet couches, one of which, to my disbelief, a dog appeared standing on top of the back of the couch. That was of the two-seater sofa. It wasn't a normal dog, though. It was a skeleton of a dog. Quite a big dog, too. It was staring forward into the mirror across the room, its eyes red and body-emitting black smoke. I'm that moment I didn't feel any fear, more sense of curiosity and calmness. Wasn't afraid whatsoever and just stared. Thought I was asleep, but I was awake and it was really happening. I was laying there staring at this demonic looking dog. No sound around the surrounding areas displayed faint color of the objects around me accompanied by fuzz. Sprinkles of gray. This dog disappeared after a few blinks. In the morning, my friend woke up in her own pee. She had peed the bed. She's never done it before, and it could have been a coincidence, but I don't think so. My aunt just died this week, and now my lights freak out. Help. S.O.S. How do I gonna do this? I gonna treat this like some sort of report for me. That's the best way, I think. What happened? So my aunt just died this week. And yesterday night, my lamps start flickering. Thought nothing of it, but then I told my mom. She also had it happen in her home around the same time. Info about my aunt. She was mentally handicapped, very heavy, in parentheses. So she never talked. Well, she did talk, but it meant nothing. She went downhill last week and died this week. We burned her, and I was with my dad and mom till the last moment. How I feel about it. Well, I think it's a bit weird. Cause when my grandmother died, nothing happened. I also did not feel the vibe change, or something. But when the lights freaked out, I just knew what it meant. I cheeked my lamps twice to debunk it, but nothing came from it. I also didn't see anything. Do I believe in ghosts? Well, yes and no. I know they are here, but always when something like this happens, I can debunk it or have an idea what's going on. But now I don't have any idea what's up. What now? I'm gonna observe my lamps and will watch the vibe. I know some things I need to look out for, and I will stay on my feet. What else could it be? Well... I collect World War II stuff, but I have a cross on my displays, and I never had any issues with my World War II stuff. I do have a helmet that has blood in it, and if you pick it up, you can feel power of that relic. But otherwise, I don't have anything that I get feelings when I hold it. Could it be this? I don't know, I have the helmet for some years and never had something happen. I only feel that something is up with it, but I also think this is just in my head. Hmm, raises eyebrow. Entity attached to me. I've always been in disbelief about it. When I was very young, I encountered an entity on my wall. A dark shadow figure in the shape of a tall man with a hat. 
I battled with my parents over this presence that would appear to me when the sun would set. My mom would get very angry at me when I was young, because I would rather stand in the hallway in complete darkness crying all night at fear, or they would find me sleeping on any bed or room that wasn't mine, as long as I wasn't alone. My mom would complain that I was scaring her, but the truth is I was more scared. I would hear tapping every night by my bed, followed by the outline of a tall man. Finally, I was given holy water, and the day I put it on that wall, it was a blessing. Issue resolved. It disappeared the same day. Or so I thought. I didn't have problems in that house. Moving forward, I'm having issues with tapping on the walls once more. Only this time, it's in a freshly built home. It follows me around from bedroom to kitchen to living room, only when I'm up late to hear it. When I mention it or try to record it, the tapping sounds immediately cease. It's only targeting me for attention. I ignored it for a long time, hoping it was all some explainable coincidence. However, today I finally captured a video that makes me sick to my stomach. I was up late around 2 a.m. That's when I heard knocking on the corner of the wall. I decided to listen for a bit, then pull out the camera to record. Of course, it immediately stopped. I instigated by knocking on the wall. It knocked back at me, mocking the same exact knock I made. I'm in shock and disbelief. If anybody's dealt with this or can help, please do. I'm not in any immediate danger, but this is a cry for help. I need this away from me and my family. I'll show my mom the video and other evidence. The other evidence I've gathered in the morning. Any advice is welcome. The Little Doll That Wanted My Soul The little doll had a spirit attached to it. We had a paranormal team come take it to the museum with other haunted artifacts local to us. We found them at a yard sale. They were both missing the same side leg. LOL. The owners and we joked about the dolls being haunted. We bought them both for five dollars. When we get in the car to leave the yard sale, we found the dolls at... It started to hail with the sun shining. We ended up going to eat. Beck, there was no way we could shop the yard sales in the rain. After we got done eating about an hour later, we went to another yard sale a block away from where we'd gotten the dolls from. Everything was dry and nothing was out of place. I asked the lady how did she keep her stuff dry when that hail came through. She didn't know what I was talking about. If my fiancé wasn't with me, I don't know if I would have believed myself, lol. That night, my fiancé had a real bad dream about the smaller doll. It was telling him to kill me. He woke up and thought he actually hurt me. I joined some groups and shared the picture of the doll on Facebook. They immediately knew it was the little doll. My friend showed her mom the picture of the doll. Her mom wanted to come see it before the paranormal team took it. When they got to my apartment, she went to hold the doll, but immediately sat it back down. Beck, the energy, was so overwhelming. I asked her if I should try to hold it. Beck, it was my doll. She said sure. I picked it up, and as soon as I did, I felt the sensation like a high. Almost start to come through my feet, slowly inching its way up my body. When I got to my neck, I started choking and sobbing uncontrollably. Everybody yelled at me to put it down. I put it down and the feeling went much faster back out through my feet the same way it came in. My aunt almost died when she was in a car wreck. I could feel her soul leaving through her feet. Whatever it was tried entering my body for sure. We all wanted to go outside to get some fresh air after that. We walked outside between the apartment buildings. And on the deck behind me, all of a sudden there were like these five big-ass crows behind me on the balcony screeching at me. They were screeching like they wanted to attack us, lol. Well, my friend and her mom went home. 
I don't blame them, lol, anyways, the paranormal team comes. The air is so heavy when you walk in the apartment, you can literally feel the energy. They start blessing the dolls in the house, and the neighbor's dog is howling the entire time. Which it never does. The lady carried a white stone to keep her grounded and protected. She started freaking out, Beck the stone turned hot. The energy level was a 3.5 out of 10. It was all so crazy. Glad I have so many witnesses. LOL, if you look in the picture, just one doll and you zoom in. It's right or your left, I. You can see the outline of a little boy's face. I didn't even notice that until this past year when somebody pointed it out to me. Several people told me it was the spirit of a little boy. It only occurs to me now that saying Beck is saving those precious milliseconds to write out cause, or in this sense, Oz. If you bring those two together, you'd get a glorious word called because. My non-SP experiences were low-grade scary. For some background on me, I never considered myself sensitive to anything. But I've had very vivid sleep paralysis, SP experiences, since I was 12. I refuse to watch horror movies because based on the SP, my psyche has enough material to work with. I've seen pastors and other religious people with the yellow halos. I'm spiritual and moderately religious. I've definitely been afraid during many sleep paralysis episodes, but also had a few that seemed casual and even friendly. Only three times have I had waking experiences that surpass my logic. Number one was my first ever encounter. It was a simple knocking on the corner of my bedroom at 11 years old. I was a military brat, moved many times, but never encountered anything until this house. This is also the house where I experienced sleep paralysis for the first time. I headed to bed one night and I was up reading. I heard a knocking that steadily picked up pace from the upper corner of my room. I yelled for my mom and immediately the knocking slowed down. As soon as she opened her bedroom door to the hall, the knocking stopped. She came in, checked on me, rolled her eyes a little, and went back to her bedroom. As soon as she closed the door, the knocking picked up again. I yell. It slows. She opens the door. Rinse and repeat two more times before my mom lets me sleep in her room. And this never really occurred again. This house, or after. I had one morning of sleep paralysis during which I heard chains dragging to my room. Felt my blanket be lifted off of me. Laid back down, heard chains dragging back out of the room. I remember being uneasy in that house, which makes no sense because it was a new build. Maybe it could be explained away by pressure differences, but the slowing at my yelling was what really freaked me out. Like it knew I was scared, and it was teasing me, almost, like letting my mom witness it too. Strange noises continued to haunt my evenings. Number two. This one still, excuse the pun, haunts me. Where's the pun? I'm gonna find it. Strange noises continue to haunt my evenings. Number two. This one still haunts me. I will excuse the pun because I find it to be absent. I was 22, asleep in college at my boyfriend's house in his bed. Several nights prior, I had heard or felt a scratching on my pillow. I turned the pillow, found no sores. I then nudged the boyfriend, asked him about it, to which he responded in utter groggy confusion. He was facing the other way with both arms out to reach my pillow. He hadn't heard anything. He suggested it was his roommate's hedgehog on the other side of the wall. It happened briefly a couple more nights after. One day I glimpsed the roommate's room, saw the hedgehog was on the dresser against the opposite wall. For how loud the scratching was, and the way I felt it in the fabric against my cheek, 
that couldn't have been the source. All of these previous times, it was brief and went away after I investigated a little bit. Until one night persisted after I flipped the pillow. It persisted after I remade my half of the bed. It persisted when I used a completely different pillow. I felt along the wall as it was occurring, thinking maybe it was a mouse or a bug. Bug. I tossed and turned and the scratching continued. I wasn't scared as much as I was annoyed. I just wanted to sleep. Exasperated, I slammed my head back and said out loud, Stop it! Instantly, I froze. The scratching had indeed stopped, but there was a pressure on my body and a feeling of terror came over me like I'd never experienced. I was suddenly crying, though I couldn't hear or see anything out of the ordinary. Inexplicably, I thought something horrible was about to happen. It took me a moment to think about the terror, and I began praying in my head. As I did... This feeling of warmth and lightness blossomed, slowly flowed from the center of my chest, until the fear and pressure were completely gone. Boyfriend never believed me, though he knew about the SP that started up again my freshman year. The weird thing is, the scratching continues to happen very intermittently to this day. As soon as I pray, it disappears. It's happened every time I tell the story. Most notably when I went tent camping with a friend in the middle of the woods. We were sharing ghost stories over the fire. I told this one then went, you know, went to bed and we both felt the scratching on our pillows on the opposite end of the tent. However, similar to my sleep paralysis, it doesn't occur when I sleep in a room with an open Bible. Even just last week at 25, I woke up to sounds like somebody snapping their fingers in my apartment at 3 a.m., Turned the lights on, checked the apartment was secure. Tried to track the sound, but it moved room to room. Came back to my bedroom and realized I'd left folded shirts covering my Bible. The moment I took them off, a pressure lifted. My sinuses cleared, and the sounds halted. I don't know if it's the same entity following me as perhaps the deep laughing I hear sometimes recurring in SP events, or just a series of unfortunate encounters. I've since been speaking in gentle tones to encourage anything hanging around my apartment to move on or stay with me in a quiet peace. Regardless, the Bible stays. And I might live in fear of missing a pun that was actually there and I just don't understand it. Damn my brain. Lady of the House So the house I live in was built sometime in the 40s. It sits on five acres of land. I live in a very small town. Smaller than small. I call it a micro-town. It's hardly even a town. There's not much here. And it's pretty rural, but nested between two other cities. Only about a quarter of our land is cleared. The rest is dense woods. We don't go back there often because of ticks. However, my boyfriend's been throughout the whole property, and he came across what used to be another house deep in the woods. It looks as though it had burned down. All that's left is some bricks, which match the bricks of our fireplace and front porch, and the cement blocks in the house once sat on, which match the cement blocks that our house sits on. Our house is all wood, except for vinyl siding, which was probably put on in the last 30 years or so. I'm assuming the old house burned down and the original family rebuilt the current one that we live in now. All five acres have remained as one property over the years, so the original family owned every bit that we own now. There's no record to my knowledge of the house that we found in the woods, so there's no telling how old it is. The town was established in the 1830s, and something odd to note is that there are no cemeteries here. I do know that it was common to have a family plot on your property, and most homes here sit on at least a few acres. So honestly, I believe there could be a couple of people buried here, but we haven't found any headstones. But also, if they were marked with flat headstones, they could possibly have been grown over or covered. So here's where the paranormal aspect comes into play. 
A few months ago, I was getting ready for work. I was in the bathroom with the door open. The bathroom was at the very back end of the house. I suddenly heard a woman talking. As I stepped out into the hall, it stopped. I walked around, made sure the TV wasn't on, computer wasn't on, and it wasn't my phone, which was right next to me. I brushed it off and carried on. I told my boyfriend's dad about it, and he mentioned seeing a shadow figure in the living room and dining room area, which is where the woman's voice came from. A few days ago while I was at work, my boyfriend was here alone in the office, at the back of the house by the bathroom. He was messing with a knife or something, and all of a sudden, here's a woman laughing. It sounded like it came from the front of the house. He's a skeptic and has never had a paranormal experience, but he texted me right away. I reminded him of when I heard her talking, and two nights ago we were sitting on our bed with the door open. We were right across from the kitchen. He had the lights off aside from the lamp in her room. He looked at me and said he just saw a figure walk across the kitchen toward the dining room. I've never seen a figure myself, and we aren't scared. Whatever's here seems friendly. I wish I knew more about the history of the property. Confusing experience from childhood. My girlfriend the other day asked me if I'd ever had a paranormal experience. I gave it a quick thought, started to say no when an old memory came flooding in. I was about 10. My family went to visit my stepdad's side of the family in a very small town in Minnesota. The trip was fine until my mom left a couple of days early. I didn't mind. I'm very close with my stepdad and having a good time with all the cousins. The house was short on beds, so me and my stepdad shared a bed in, ba ugh, shared a bed in the basement. I woke up extremely uncomfortable. Best way I could describe it is having the feeling of crushed by hard plastic, like the kind they use for Nintendo 64 products. The feeling even had the same creaking to it. I was young and scared, abnormally scared, could move, but painfully. I woke up my stepdad and he thought I was just having a bad dream, but it didn't really subside until I got him to take me upstairs. Slept on the floor upstairs after that and have never been able to come up with an explanation for what happened. I'm in my thirties now and it still makes me nervous to think about. Any thoughts? I tried to convince myself that it wasn't happening. Growing up, I, a 29-year-old female, lived in a haunted house. My sisters and mother all have an affinity for the paranormal, but I'm too scared to allow myself to see it. Every time something unexplainable happened, I would run away, ignore it, pretend it never happened, and distract myself. Examples would be hearing my parents call my name when I know I'm home alone, hearing clicking noises that are coming from the middle of an empty room, clearly seeing someone standing in the corners I pass by, doing a double take for them to no longer be there. One night when I was about 19, I was staying up late, watching cartoons and drawing. It was about two in the morning when my dog picked up her head and started looking toward the middle of my room. She jolted back as if something freaked her out then immediately got off to my bed and ran in the middle of the room, barking hysterically at something I couldn't see. This immediately gave me goosebumps, called my dog back multiple times, trying to get her back to my bed and make her calm down. She wouldn't stop. Then it happened. I felt something. It was like somebody squeezed my legs. I had both my legs out in front of me, sitting up, and they were under blankets. I felt it, but I thought I was imagining it. Then I looked down to see, clear as day, two large hand-shaped imprints over the blankets, slowly running from below my knee up to my thighs. My lights were on and I was sober. I was fully awake. There was no denying that it happened. I couldn't move. I didn't know what to do. I started crying, called my younger sister, sleeping in another room next to me over and over. She woke up, came to my room. My dog didn't stop barking until my sister came there. I had a full-blown panic attack, and I know this story is not as scary from an outside perspective, but I've never been so scared. 
Another strange factor was around this time. We had a peeping Tom that was leaving lots of evidence of them looking through her windows, trying to open windows and getting to her cars. He would leave handprints and forehead prints on her windows. And I think I may have woken up while he was watching because he left a stepladder, grabbed it from our side yard against my window on multiple occasions. Another time we found bare footprints outside our window in mud after a rainy night. We never figured out who it was, but all my sisters and I have since moved out of my parents. Haven't noticed anything else weird happening. They didn't notice it before either. I was the only one finding or pointing out the occurrences. I know these are two different situations, but I sometimes feel like they're related somehow. Moved out a couple of years later with no reoccurrences in the night. It was one of the scariest experiences I've ever had, and when I talk about the story out loud, I still tear up and get emotional. I do still experience things depending on where I live. Luckily, the house I now own does not have any weird vibes or things happening after a couple of years of living here. I just thought I would share one of my scariest paranormal experiences. Gotta say, one of my favorite memories. Well, let me back it up. Peeping Toms, to me, or the idea of it, may be scarier than ghosts. And a very good memory of mine is Peeping Tom was sneaking around my house. And uh, I think we kind of knew about it beforehand. Or at least there was evidence of this happening. So we hear this noise at the bedroom or bathroom door. And my dad jumps out of bed and I think he's in tidy whities and grabs a handgun, clicks the magazine into the gun and then you hear this guy fall down this sort of little cliff I had by my house. You could kind of hear him rolling down the cliff and I'm just standing there in the hallway not really knowing what's going on but in awe of the spectacle of both the sight of him and the sounds of the guy rolling down the cliff. So in essence, screw those guys. Sorry if that was TMI. A Christmas Visit from Grandma My grandma died when I was very young. It affected me deeply because she's been watching me at the time while my mom was out. She died in front of me, and I reacted as best as I could being a child went to my aunt and uncle's house who lived just behind me. All I knew was that something was wrong with grandma because she'd fallen down the stairs. The EMTs came after they called 911, but nothing could be done. She had passed. For the longest time I had trouble dealing with it. I spent the longest time blaming myself and hurting deeply over it. This has been the most traumatic experience in my life. Shortly after she died, we moved into the home that she lived in to take care of my great-grandma. Though with time it's healed as best as it can, the one thing I, well, I think about my grandma during Christmas. If there was ever a truer person that embodied love and the spirit of the season, it was my grandma. She would gather all my relatives, aunts and uncles and cousins to her house. For a holiday feast, everyone would gather together. From far and near, too, because my grandma was pretty much the matriarch of the family. The entire glue that was our family was held together by her hands, not to mention her food. If there's one thing she could do well, it was cook. But her expertise, I think, was baking. I have fond and vivid memories of gathering apples from the apple tree in the backyard for her. That's where she would bake pies, crisps, and whatever else she could do with them. Though her cookies were the best. I loved my grandma's cookies, and she made the best chocolate chip in the world. I would stake my life on it. And I remember her kitchen always being filled with the most wonderful smells imaginable. I recall a time during the holiday season when I was really missing her. It had been many years since she'd passed, and I was still trying to come to grips with her dying when I was so young. 
I was sitting in my bedroom thinking about it and kind of just talking to her in my head. I was feeling rather upset over it, really, and, you know, I miss you, Grandma. It was the thought in my head that came, and shortly after it did, there was a loud sound in the kitchen. The sound was of a clash of pots and pans, almost like somebody was getting them out and tossing them on the countertops. We had cats at the time, so I assumed they were being ornery and had knocked things over. So I went to the kitchen to investigate. There was nothing. Not a cupboard opened or anything strewn about. Nor was there a pot or pan out of place, as well as nothing at all on the countertops themselves. It was confusing, to say the least. I shrugged it off as an odd occurrence and went back to the room. Though it was then that the whole house filled with the most pungent and wonderful smell, it was of someone baking. Not just the kitchen, but the entire house itself permeated with what smelled like a mix of brownies and cookies being made. My heart was strangely warmed by it. I had forgotten about being sad. But though it did dawn on me that it wasn't just a weird occurrence, I'm convinced that it was my grandmother coming back to comfort me. Let me know that she was still around and that she loved me in the best way that she knew how. The story doesn't end on that note, however. When my mom came home from work that day, as soon as she walked through the door, she said, it Smells like somebody's been baking in here. Merry Christmas, Grandma. Yes, Gecko. I concur. Baby Keys on the Basement Floor It all started when I was around 13. It started with footsteps that were heard by my stepdad, mom, and sister. We were all sitting in the living room when this happened. It's done numerous things over the years. Turned on the blender, turned on lights, turned on the water faucet, lots of footsteps and moving things. There are witnesses to some of these events. It's quieted down, though, over the years. About a year ago, and there was a flurry of activity over a few weeks. Several witnessed by my wife, one by my mom, who was visiting. There hadn't been anything I noticed until last night. And here's a quick backstory. Earlier this year, I did a pretty thorough organization of the house. We have two kids, nine and seven. We went through all of their toys and asked them if they wanted to save or to donate an item. All of the toys they wanted to keep to give to their kids someday. I put in a plastic Ziploc tote and put those totes on the top shelf in the basement. Went downstairs last night and a set of baby keys was laying on the basement floor. And what I mean by baby keys are plastic keys you, you know, give to a baby for them to chew on or to play with. They're different bright colors, about six to eight of them on a ring. I specifically remember my daughter telling me that she wanted to keep them. I remember putting them in one of those totes. Now the totes are on the top shelf. Settle down. My kids are a little and not really physically capable of, you know, taking down this thing, let alone put the tote back up. All the totes are on the shelf. Also note that they will not go downstairs by themselves. They're afraid of ghosts. Also note, I took Christmas decorations up from the basement a few weeks ago, put the plastic totes back there. There were no keys on the floor. Also note, my wife has not messed with any of the stuff in the basement. She leaves it to me to bring up and down the decorations. So, there they were on the basement floor. When I saw them, I said out loud, well, that's unusual. They're still there. I hadn't put it back in. Not earth-shattering, but still interesting and unusual. I wonder what's next, since, you know, it let me know it's here. Possession or just the unexplained? When I was 12, I was in boarding school. The school term ended and I came home from the school holidays to my childhood home that my mom had only recently moved back into, after having had some tennis for some time. 
They were still like unpacked boxes piled high in the dining room, and the furniture was out of place. Happily, my old friend Emma, who had been in a different school, was invited over. It, well, I hadn't seen her in a long time. That evening out of boredom, or whatever you might call it, my mother, Emma, and I decided to play a game called Glassy Glassy. Glassy Glassy is basically the poor man's Ouija board. All it takes is a drinking glass turned upside down, scraps of paper on either side of the small glass table with the words yes and no. As we put our fingertips to the bottom of the overturned glass, it eventually started moving very slowly with the questions that we asked. Very stupid questions. Are you a ghost? And such. As the night wore on, the glass moved quicker and quicker under our fingertips, and I even accused my mom of pushing the glass and making a fool of me. My mother laughed it off and said that it was our subconscious moving the glass. The longer we played, the more efficiently the glass moved, to the point where it was so quick it almost moved and lost traction of our fingertips. I started to believe, but unlike my mother, I didn't believe it was subconscious, but rather some otherworldly spirit. I regretted this belief, at least, well, as I tell the events that unfolded long after this silly little game. Eventually, my mom and my friend got tired and bored, but I wanted to be extra sure about the glasses' movement, so I played for a little while all by myself, eyes wide with the fact that the glass was for sure moving of its own volition. It creeped me out some. Eventually, we all went to bed. My mom to her own room and my friend and I shared my bedroom. I gave up my single bed to my friend while I cozied myself in a makeshift bed on the carpet. I fell asleep soon enough, but had a very turbulent, restless sleep. I started to dream about being in the same lounge at night, with the furniture stacked all over. In my dream, I decided I wanted to make my way to the bedroom. I could feel myself bumping up my shins against this furniture in my dream. I reached the passage door that led to my bedroom, which was closed. I reached out for the handle of the door, but could only feel the smoothness of the door. It felt so realistic. I started panicking as to why I couldn't open the door. I started beating at this door in my dream, trying over and over to grab the handle to no avail. Moments later, I heard my mother calling me. I woke up, still beating the wall with open hands while standing on the top of the single bed of my friend was still sound asleep in. My mom was standing at my door, perplexed. I had no idea how I managed to walk into the bed in my sleep state but it was extremely scary. The following day, I tried my best to explain to my mom about the dream, but she waved me off. Now, if you think this horror ends here, no, no. I endured a further six months or so of paranormal nocturnal happenings, but never again sleepwalking. I had to return to boarding school, and no sooner I was back, virtually every night I would suddenly awaken to apparitions next to or above my bed. By apparitions, I would jolt awake only to see, in like a imagery sandal or some object flying across me over my bed. Sound soundless, translucent apparitions, which I knew weren't real, but were there for my eyes to see, I guess, nonetheless. Once or twice, I would suddenly awake at night to see a dorm maid standing next to my bed. I would even call out their name only for this apparition to dissolve and fade away in front of my eyes. I even sat up to check if my doormate was in her bed, and there she was, sound asleep. I was just terrified of sleeping every night. Every night would at best bring a creepy waking experience, or at worst, some sort of apparition of sheer terror. I couldn't tell my doormates or my teachers. I was sure they wouldn't believe me, or they would see it as a cry for attention. I just endured this for months on end, tried to pray, sleep in certain positions, or whatever might improve the situation. Part of me wondered if I was going mentally ill, but another part knew that all this started ever since I played that glassy glassy. I tried to convince myself if it was in my mind, although I knew it was just me lying to myself. Another school holiday at the end of the year rolls around, back home with my mom. 
but the fear hasn't left me, although the encounter started happening much less. On this particular holiday, my mom's friend Mandy is staying the night. My mom and her are sitting in my mom's room, watching movies and chatting away. I did whatever I did as a kid, playing and watching TV, but eventually decided to go to sleep. My room was a bit untidy. The windows were closed. I had a stack of heavy books on the dresser next to my bed, topped off with some paper and cardboard. I switched off the light and settled down to sleep. I was just to the point of deep sleep when I heard some scratching noises of the paper and cards laying on the dresser right next to my bed. I opened my eyes and saw another apparition. That same translucent type that somehow showed up no matter well, how dark. Its hands were fidgeting with the paper and card. That was as I looked at it, and it seemed to look back at me. This form was the form of my mom's friend Mandy. Same height, same hair, green eyes that I could see in the dark. For the second or two, it just stared at me while touching the paper. What terrified me the most was that this time it wasn't just me seeing things. I was hearing it touch something. Before I could even spring up to turn on the light, I heard a crashing of the books from the dresser onto the floor. I bounded out of the bed in one leap and pulled the light on. Terrified, I surveilled like what was could possibly be happening behind me. The huge heavy books that had been neatly piled on the dresser were strewn across the floor, so far spread out that it would have landed so far had they collapsed naturally. I was so creeped out and the book that had been on top was an old book called The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan. Gosh, just for added spooky and dramatic effect. Still, I knew this possession of me was real, and I had unleashed something awful that night of glassy glassy. But the conscious, logical part of my mind told me to go ask Mandy if she had been in my room. I knocked and asked Mandy and my mom, and they were both relaxing on the bed watching a movie in their room. They said no and looked at me as though I was crazy. Fortunately, that incident was the last of them, as this problem left me. It really terrified me as a kid, and although I told my mom about the things that happened, and that it all started with Glassy Glassy, she definitely didn't take me seriously. I've told very few people in my adult life, as I imagine they'd think I'm crazy or a liar. Weird whistling happening outside my window last night. Yesterday night at around 3 a.m. I heard whistling outside my window. The first three were in three to four second intervals. The third and last whistle took a bit longer. I had the curtains and blinds over it, but I could definitely hear whistling. But the whistling didn't sound like a bird. Usually birds around my area don't whistle for 45 seconds, and they have an odd pause. Whatever was making the noise sounded like it had lips, or was actually whistling. I don't have tinnitus, nor is my house broken in any sort of way to be making these sounds. My parents are obviously asleep in their rooms since I could hear them both snoring. I'm not on any medication, and I don't hallucinate or have delusions either, so I don't know. There really isn't a clear reason why I heard the whistling. I had the feeling to get up from my bed and open the blinds to see what it was, but something in my gut was telling me if I did, I would regret it. So I stayed in my bed in silence, tried to go back to sleep. Now, I am a skeptic, but I do believe in the paranormal and respecting it. But this? I don't have an explanation for this. It's freaking me out. Like, is there some sort of being that does this kind of stuff? How can I protect myself from it? The Woman in My Brother's Room I live with my mom, dad, and two siblings. It's not the biggest apartment in the world, so younger siblings share one room. But it's divided into two halves. Basically their own rooms, but technically not. Their room is divided by a bunk bed and a bookcase. The ceiling of their halves from one another. Hope this makes sense. There's a bookcase divider. 
My younger sister's half of the room, however, wouldn't get much natural, like, sunlight. So the windows are on the brother's side of the room. So my parents decided to put in a window between them so light could shine through both rooms. And keep this in mind, it's important for the story. About a year ago, I was home from school one day, feeling a bit sick. So I was left alone in our apartment. I had just woken up, taking a shower and eating breakfast. That's when I heard what sounded like footsteps coming from the direction of my siblings' rooms. While it initially cleared me out a bit, I just chalked it up to the neighbors being loud or making things up. I then went to brush my teeth, but thinking nothing of it. Our bathroom was parallel to my siblings' room, and the door of my sister's room was open. So looking in the bathroom mirror, I could see into my brother's room from my sister's window. When I finished brushing my teeth, I went to spit out my toothpaste bending down over the sink and leaving my sister's window out of sight for a split second. When I looked back up, I saw something that made my stomach drop. A large silhouette of a woman was looking intently at me through my sister's window. They were standing in my brother's room. As soon as she knew I had noticed her, she seemed alerted, quickly bent down out of sight. In a panic, I rushed out of the bathroom, ran into the kitchen, and took a knife to defend myself. Fearing somebody had broken in, I yelled out, Who are you? No response. At this point, I gathered the courage to shakily make my way over to my brother's room, knife in hand, to confront whatever or whoever it was in my home. Put my ear up to his door, waited a couple of seconds, and then I shit you not, I heard a raspy breathing on the other side. It sounded like somebody dying and desperately sucking after air. I think the sound Bonnie and Chica make in FNAF1 when they stand outside your door. <clears throat> what is a Bonnie and a Chica? Safe to say I noped out of there immediately, locked myself in my room. I called my parents and told them what happened, and they sounded concerned. Then my dad said something that hadn't even slipped my mind. But that window's over two meters, six and a half feet. Hi. Whatever thing this was had to be the tallest woman on earth. As it, yes, it, had to hunch over to look through the window. I stayed in my room until my parents came home. When looking through the apartment, they didn't find anything. To this day, I try to stay away from my brother's room at all costs, and I always close the door and I'm brushing my teeth. I'm not trying my chances with whatever the hell that thing is. The time I saw a ghost in a nursing home. So I was working first shift. It was about 3 p.m. I worked a hallway lined with 15 rooms for mostly palliative care patients. The room I had the experience in belongs to a very Alzheimer's affected lady. She would say things like there are people looking at her through the window and talk to people in her room. That's normal and didn't make me think she was seeing actual spirits. But then I saw something I can't explain. Her call light went off in her room. But I was confused because she was not in her room. She was at an activity. So I start walking toward the room down the hallway and I see a shadow of a person. No face, no features. Just a shadow. Except it's not on the wall, it's in the hallway. It's in front of the room. I keep walking toward the room and it starts to move into the room. The door is open, so we both are moving toward the room and go through the door. It enters the room and disappears around the corner toward the call light. At first, standing in the room, I was scared and tears welled up in my eyes. But then I just walked out and didn't really think much about it again. Didn't tell anyone either. Until two weeks later, I'm in the same room with another CNA, and she brings up the dark figure that appeared in this room and another room. I'm like, WTF? I saw it two weekends ago. She went on to tell me a few other experiences people have had, and I'm just in shock. My great-grandmother came to me in a dream the night of her funeral. I always just assumed it was my subconscious way of coping with losing the grandparent. 
grandparent I was closest to. That was until I saw other people who had similar experiences on here. This must have been about eight years ago. I was 18 and my great-grandmother passed away. She had Alzheimer's, and when her mind started fading, everything happened quickly. It started with calls to her daughter and telling her she was babysitting me or my sisters or cousins, etc. She couldn't find them. Then I'd go to visit her and she'd talk about people who had passed away 10 or 15 years ago like they were sitting there in the room with us. Anyways, you get it. She dies and my family has a funeral, as one does. That night I'm emotionally exhausted, I try to get some rest. I had a dream where I was going to visit her in the nursing home she was staying at. I knock on her door and then remember that she can't really get around, so I go to let myself in and there she was, standing there, reaching for the doorknob. Just as I remembered her when she was healthy and herself. I remember telling her I can't believe how good she looks, thought she couldn't really get out of bed. She tells me everything's going to be okay now, and wraps me up in the warmest hug. In that dream, it felt like we talked and laughed with each other for hours. She apologized for missing my birthday. I'd leave her room to go to a vending machine, and I'd tell her I'd be right back, and then I'd wake up. I immediately called my sister to tell her about this dream I just had. She thought it was kind of creepy, but to this day, it was the most comforted I'd ever been. And again, it could have just been a way of coping with loss, but it really helped in a difficult time. My Encounter with the Demon God I've only told about five people the story, but I wanted to share it with other like-minded people to try to understand this experience better. So this all took place in 2016-2017, central Georgia, about 45 minutes from Macon. I've always been fascinated with the paranormal. I've had countless experiences from my childhood, so I was hanging out with my friends when the topic comes up. Of course, most of my other friends are very skeptical. I suggest that we go somewhere haunted. There's a local legend here about a road with five bridges. Ironically, it's called Three Bridges Road to Locals. I told my friends we should check it out. We get there at about 1 a.m. and stay a couple of hours. There were a few strange sounds that we heard and a dark, heavy feeling, but not much else. One of my friends claims that he saw a woman, but nobody else did, so I figured it was just his imagination. After we're done with the bridges, we go to the church that's right beside them. Now this church is, to put it plainly, weird and creepy. It had blacked out windows, no steeple, and a small cemetery with graves that date back to the 1790s. We get a much stronger feeling here and decide to head back to my buddy's camper and chill. Fast forward a couple of days, and one of my friends, Gunther, claims that he's been seeing a tar lady, as he called her, ever since we did our little ghost hunting trip. So me trying to help him feel better decided to cleanse his camper. Mind you, I've never done this before. So he just starts saying, Any negative entity, I command you to leave. You are not welcome here. I said this over and over. After about three minutes, I feel an immense pressure and weight, like carrying a hundred-pound book bag or something. The lights start to flicker, but I keep on. My friend tells me that there are entities pointing at me laughing and mocking. I don't see anything, so I continue for about ten minutes until it's too much to bear. I run outside and start puking. My friend tells me I have dark circles around my eyes. I feel like I had the worst hangover in history. Tell him I have to leave and go back home. I feel okay the next day, so we ask another friend, Rick, who didn't go with us the first time for help. He's a pagan and really knowledgeable on the occult and the supernatural lore. We go back to the church, he looks around for a minute and just says, This isn't hollowed ground. We asked what he's talking about. He says that a church should be on hollowed ground, and especially cemeteries. He implies that something weird is going on, and he suspects that the people of this church might be practicing dark arts. Pretty nervous at this time, and me and my friend Gunther look at each other. Rick then says he can help Gunther, 
and they go to his camper alone. The next day, I check up on Gunther, and he says he's all, pretty much all right now. Rick gave him something that would protect him. I asked what it was, and he said, it's a demon lord that Rick had a contract with. Gunther said he had to accept the demon, and did. I was very skeptical and pretty much thought they were full of crap. Over the course of the next few weeks, I'd be hanging out with Gunther and his demeanor would completely change. He isn't dumb or anything, but he is simple and speaks plainly. When this thing would take over, he would speak very articulate and sophisticated. He also wouldn't say I when speaking about himself. He would say Gunther. So I tested this theory by asking it to prove that it was real, not just imagination got wild or maybe split personalities. It told me a traumatic event I witnessed as a child that I damn sure didn't tell anybody. My mind tried to erase it. When it said this, I was filled with uncontrollable rage. My other friend had to stop me from hitting him. All the while, this thing and my friend had a huge grin on his face. After I calmed down, I asked different questions. It confirmed it was a demon lord. It told me how Gunther's step-grandma was using witchcraft, and about the cult at the church trying to open the portal. The only time I made it angry was when I was helping a friend Tiffany who had a negative entity attached to her. The demon was with us, and we had two candles lit. I started saying a prayer over Tiffany to get the evil spirit out. She was screaming in pain and her back arched backwards in a sickening way. The demon lord was saying a chant under his breath the whole time with his eyes completely closed. After the entity was out of her, I used the opportunity to move my hand in attention to my friend Gunther who had still had his eyes closed. He kept saying the same prayer. His eyes shot open immediately, and the look he had was pure hatred. He looked me dead in the eye and said, Don't fuck with me then grabbed both candles and blew them out simultaneously. I have a lot of other stories about this demon lord and other unrelated paranormal experiences, but this is the one that will always be the creepiest. I have many questions. Somebody keep an eye on Gunther. Why would an entity be unable to enter the room of a newborn baby? This is going to be a bit longish of a story. It happened a long time ago, 1970-ish, and a lot of the people it happened to are now gone. However, my oldest brother remembers it pretty well, and my second oldest brother remembers a few things that happened around him as well. I don't remember any of this at all. I was a newborn baby. I was told this story many times by my mother, my brothers and sister, and many cousins witnessed it, swore that it all happened. So, apparently there was this older lady who was related on the opposite bloodline of ours to one of our cousins, Alma. The old lady was very ill, knew that she was dying. She talked to my cousin about some cookbooks that she wanted to have, and when she passed away because she knew that Alma liked cooking, she wanted her to have them. She was very specific, though, about three or four of the special cookbooks. Maybe they had some special family recipes in them or something. Anyhow, she was very clear that Alma was not to take these cookbooks, but everything else was okay. So eventually the old lady passed away. They were clearing out her things. My cousin Alma took the cookbooks that she was told that she could have, and for some stupid reason she took the ones that the old lady specifically wanted her daughters to have as well. I don't know where her daughters were at this time, but I was told that she basically stole these books that were meant for someone else. So now, the way my mom told it, my cousin was out of the old lady's funeral, and she came out to stay at our house. My mom said that she was talking to her on the phone just before she came over, and she found it strange. The phone line was very staticky and crackly sounding, like a really bad connection, which in fairness it could have been. But my mom, in hindsight, thought it well may have been what she later brought to our house with her, so... I'm not really sure how long the stuff lasted for, but I know it was for quite a few days at least. 
As soon as Alma came to our house to stay for a bit, that's when it all started. She had brought the things that had been left to her by the old lady as well as the books that she took without permission. Weird things started happening almost immediately. Knocks and bumps in the walls, silverware in the cabinet jingling and moving inside the drawers on its own. Like you could hear it rattling and bumping together. Metallic noises. They would go to the bed under the covers of a fully made undisturbed bed that they would find cutlery, like butter knives, spoons and forks, just sitting there. Alma was getting the worst of this stuff, though, and she would hear knocks and bangs in her room or under her bed. Her hair would get pulled in her sleep, and other stuff that basically wasn't letting her rest. During this time, my middle brother says that he saw books move on their own. The cookbooks, I assume. Also, a whittled, very distinct piece of wood somebody was messing around carving with got thrown out in the woods when they were done with it. When it came back into the house, that exact same piece of wood was on the stove. Things kept getting weirder and louder, and my mom was getting really scared one day that they all went to the bedroom I was sleeping in as a baby. I guess it was quite a commotion going on in the house. They all ran into my room to be safe together and made sure I was okay. Whatever this entity was, was not going in the room where I was for some reason. Anyhow, they're all in the room I was in, and they could hear the same thing scratching on the door and rattling it. They heard a disembodied voice speak as it was messing with the door. All they heard was it say in a raspy, croaky voice was the word, Cook, cook, cook. My cousin then broke down and confessed to my mom that she had taken cookbooks that were not for her. My mom was very upset with her told her to take the books back to the old lady's house that morning. The morning they were taking the books back to my sister and they were going with Alma. That was because she was too scared to go there on her own after all that happened. My sister was holding the stack of books and Alma said that she was done with them all. She's going to take them all back, just as she said that each book that she stole came off the stack my sister was holding and each one landed right on top of the other on the floor perfectly. They landed perfectly on top of each other, one at a time. Alma didn't want anything more to do with any of it. She returned all of it. All activity in her house stopped after that, and all was good. The question I have is, why would it be avoiding an infant's room? Maybe she just liked babies. One other thing I've got to mention also is my mom tried pickle recipes from some of those cookbooks before she knew that some were stolen. She said everything she made was messed up and didn't really turn out properly. In weird ways, like dill pickles becoming almost jelly-like. If you made it all the way to this, thanks a lot. I've been waiting a long time to tell this story. I know a lot of people will say it's all made up, but it is true. It was true as it was told to me by my family and family friends that saw things happen as well. See ya.